something into space, whether that's a satellite, a spacecraft, or the James Webb Space Telescope. It takes a lot of oomph. You need a lot of force to overcome Earth's gravity and get us out beyond the many layers of our planet's atmosphere. It's why rockets have such big boosters. They're filled with rocket fuel, and when that fuel is ignited, that makes a lot of force out and down, which sends the rocket up, up, and up. But during launch, the thing you want to get into space, that might be the telescope or the satellite, we often call it the payload. That payload is also going to experience the wild ride. It's going to be traveling very, very fast and things are going to get pretty shaky. Often, it's also a highly sensitive piece of scientific equipment that scientists and engineers will have spent years and years making. The last thing you want is for it to get damaged during launch. You get to space, find out it doesn't work, and then what are you going to do? It's not like you can just nip out and bring it back to fix it. So how do you prepare something like this for that wild ride into space? Well, that's what I'm here to find out here at RAL Space, the UK's national space laboratory. Anything that goes into space has to go through a series of tests and this is the first one. Hi, Charlie. Hi. Right, what on earth is this? This is a shaker. A shaker, that sounds pretty simple, but what does it actually do? Basically, the launch is quite violent and everything that goes up in space gets shaken a lot. So this is to make sure that by the time it gets into space, it hasn't shaken itself to bits. So something like Miri, that would have been tested on here. It was indeed. Miri is one of the four special cameras on board the James Webb Space Telescope, the largest, most powerful telescope ever launched into space. I made another video from here at RAL Space where I met a model of Miri. Take a look to hear how Miri is going to help Webb look into the dusty clouds where new stars are born and see our universe in new ways. Back to our vibration test though. Miri will have been tested like this, but today we're not putting anything precious on the shake table. What are we testing, Charlie? This is just a box. We do it um, ahead of a test to make sure that we know what we're doing. But it gives us a good idea of how the thing will react when we do it for real. Can we give it a go? Yes, uh, we have to put ear defenders on if you want to grab some. So it gets pretty loud? Yes, it can get very loud. Shake, rattle and roll. There it goes. What? No. Imagine being inside a spacecraft, being rattled around that much. You need a lot of nuts and bolts to not fall apart. Come on! But, whoa, Charlie! That's the kind of force that any type of payload has got to put up with. Is that still moving? Wow. That's now shaking so fast. We, our, our eyes can't actually see it happening anymore. It looks still, but that's how quickly it's moving. And now it stopped. Whoa, that was cool. This is our next test. Tom, what is this huge machine? This is our pyroshock simulator test. A pyroshock simulator test. What, what does it do? Basically, it's a massive ear tank and a barrel with a, a slug that fires along it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's not the kind of slug that I know. What's that? It's a projectile, basically. So it fires along this barrel at quite a high velocity, strikes the back of this plate, and then our test like this. So actually, this is where a bit of scientific equipment would go. Something like Miri would go here. Yes, on something much bigger than this, because Miri's a lot bigger. But yeah, exactly. Why are you doing that? Why are you firing things at, at the plate? When we're in space, rockets have to separate. And while they separate, they do it using explosive bolts. And those explosive bolts send shock waves through the structure. And we use this machine to make sure our tire slicers can survive that. I can't believe spacecraft are connected together with explosive bolts. Yeah, it's crazy. Can we use it? Yeah, we are going to have to go out because it is very loud though. Do I get to press the button? You do. Let's go. <laughs> the button's flashing. Can I press it? Go ahead. Three, two, one, blast off. That was quicker than I thought it was going to be. Should we see that again in slow-mo? Here it is. So here's the plate that the projectile struck. <gasps> what, what metal is this? Aluminium. 
So it is, it's not the strongest metal in the world, but it's definitely not the weakest. Can I see it? Yeah. Look at this. Can you see that dent? I have to be clear though, because the equipment that would be tested here on this machine, it's not actually going to get struck no. by a slug in this way. But what this does, it helps us to recreate the type of shock wave that the equipment might experience on its way to space. Yeah. It's very impressive to know that everything on board a spacecraft has to be able to withstand this type of shock wave. Wow! For our first test, we made sure that the payload could survive the launch into space. Test two, we wanted to make sure that the payload could last the journey into space. And test three, the final one we can see today, is in there. That's where we'll make sure that the payload will last a lifetime in space. But for that, I need to get changed. Welcome to the Space Test Chamber Clean Room. John, can I borrow you? Oh yeah, sure. Everybody, meet John. Hi, Maddie. Hiya. What happens in here? Here, we test spacecraft and we recreate the conditions of space. What do you mean by that? How are you recreating space conditions? OK, well, space, there's no air. So yeah. we recreate a, a vacuum in this chamber. And also, in terms of temperature, we make it very, very hot or very, very cold. All right, so how do you make a vacuum? Oh, we've got lots of pumps that suck all the air out and then it sucks all the water vapour out and creates a really low pressure. And that's because there's no air in space? No air and no water vapour, so we get all rid of all that. And then you mentioned temperature as well. Mm -hmm. What temperatures are you getting inside that chamber? Here we can heat up to 120 degrees. 120 degrees Celsius. So if you imagine boiling water, water usually boils at about 100 degrees, that's 20 degrees hotter than that. But then you said cold as well. How cold can it get in there? Here we can go down to about minus 190 degrees Celsius. Minus 190. That is chilly. Pretty chilly. We often think of space as being really cold, but not often hot. How can it be both? Yeah, so sometimes when you're facing the sun, things get really hot. And if you're in the cold, black emptiness of space, things can get very, very cold. So really, it's a matter of whether your spacecraft, your scientific instruments are in the sun or in the shadow. That's right. So all of that is happening inside that chamber. That's right. Can we see inside that? Yeah, sure. Go on, follow me. OK, we shall. After you. It's just huge. Whoa! No way! <gasps> I feel like I'm in a movie set. What are these? These are the shroud panels. These are what get really hot or really cold. We flow liquid nitrogen through them. So the liquid nitrogen cools them down. Exactly, and then there's heaters on them as well, so they can get nice and hot. We've got 46, and they can each be a different temperature, or we can go half hot, half cold, or any combination. Well, something like Miri tested in, in something like this. Miri went through a very similar test in one of our slightly smaller chambers. Right. So Miri was tested for 100 days, 84 of those at operating temperature. 100 days? But this one, we can go for as long as nine months. What? Yeah. OK, because this is testing how something is going to survive a lifetime in space, That's right. it's important that the test does last a really long time. How does it feel to be part of an ongoing test that could be nine months long? Well, it's really exciting, but you have to be very patient. You can't just take a little peek in, can you? Because you'd let all the air in and then you lose your vacuum. We've got to close the doors and then we just got to test and wait. Thank you so much. What an amazing test to end on. Can you imagine waiting nine months for the results of something you were testing? I can't. Those were just three of the many tests that spacecraft and equipment have to go through before their journey into space. Here at RAL Space, they tested something called MIRI, which is a special piece of equipment on board the James Webb Space Telescope. And Greg has made an entire live launch show all about the James Webb Space Telescope. So those details will be in the description box below. Subscribe for more videos, stay curious, and I'll see you soon. Bye.